Trump. Ignition of Fury. If you haven't read my book, Fury, I would very much encourage you to do so. Available on Amazon or in the Knowledge Vault. Link in the video description. Narcissists have fury churning away beneath the surface. For some, they deal exclusively in heated fury, an explosive variety. Others, cold fury. And some have a mixture of the two. Heated fury is lashing out with verbal or physical violence, destroying property, a volcanic eruption. Cold fury is cold shouldering, silent treatments, and icy glare. This is deployed by the narcissism as a means of asserting control over the narcissist. And I explain in detail in my book, Fury, the purpose of Fury, why this is peculiar to narcissists, the way that it functions, and why it comes to the fore. The impact it also has upon a narcissist's fuel levels. It's a fascinating explanation. You will have, if you've been involved with a narcissist, experienced many instances of hated or cold fury as the narcissist responds to the challenging behaviour that you've issued towards them. Donald Trump, as a narcissist, like many politicians, also exhibits fury. With him, it's invariably heated fury, as his status as an upper lesser type be bombastic, belligerent, brutal and boastful. Reported in Vanity Fair by Charlotte Klein is a useful opportunity to understand how fury emerges and the purpose that it serves by reference to a reported incident involving Donald Trump. Now, of course, I suspect that Vanity Fair is not a Trump supporter and therefore revels in the opportunity to portray Trump in a particular way. I'm not interested in how it makes him look. What I'm interested in is what it shows for you to understand about narcissism. So I make that point clear for anybody who's hard of understanding. Get him out of here. Donald Trump tossed NBC reporters' phones during tirade aboard campaign plane. In a recording obtained by Vanity Fair, the former president lashed out at Vaughan Hilliard over his questions related to the Manhattan DA's case, demonstrating that the ex-president's hostile attitude towards the press remains unchanged going into 2024. It was March, and former President Donald Trump was aboard his plane with a gaggle of reporters following a campaign rally in Waco, Texas. He started off in good spirits. Evidently, people will be under control. He's receiving fuel. But then a line of questioning, challenge fuel, from NBC News reporter Vaughan Hilliard, who suggested that Trump had in recent days seemed frustrated by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's investigation, began irritating the former president. Pausing there. The questioning of Trump is something that you're not allowed to do because you're trying to pin him with accountability, which then translates as a threat to control. By telling Trump how he thinks and feels is a threat to control, suggesting that he's irritated and frustrated by the investigation is a threat to control, and therefore his fury starts to emerge as irritation. His narcissism then states, incoming threat to control, nullify it. Therefore, as the report states, Trump said, don't ask me any more questions. Issue of instruction to shut matters down. About 10 minutes later, as Hilliard continued to ask about the investigation, his perseverance lacks boundary recognition, but he may well determine that it's appropriate for him to behave that way because he feels that there's more answers that Trump should be giving and he ought to be accountable. Hilliard continued to ask about the investigation and Trump snapped, grabbing the reporter's two phones and chucking them to the side. Lack of boundary recognition, assertion of control, seeking to nullify threat to control by triangulating the reporter with his property. And this was reported by a source familiar with the matter. Get him out of here, 
Trump told his aides, according to a recording obtained by Vanity Fair. Now, of course, it's interesting that someone's recording Donald Trump. It might be because, of course, he's being interviewed, or that might be a lack of boundary recognition on the part of that individual. Either way, Trump is then nullifying the threat to control by issuing an order to people to have this individual removed. The incident occurred a few days before Trump would be indicted by a Manhattan grand jury for his role in hush money payments made to Stormy Daniels. Some of Trump's comments on the plane have been previously reported, such as when he responded to reporters' questions about Bragg's probe by attacking it as a fake case. This is a standard Donald Trump response, of course, in order to nullify threats to control by basically labelling it as fake, fake news, fake case, that they've already dropped. The Guardian noted how Trump lashed out at Hilliard when the NBC news reporter asked whether he was frustrated by the investigation. Trump denied the, no den the notion, denial, first line of the twin lines of narcissistic defence, insisting, we did nothing wrong, and saying, this is fake news. There he goes again with his favoured response. And NBC is one of the worst. Don't ask me any more questions. Hilliard himself said Trump avoided specifics, use of vagueness to manipulate, and called the press fake news. But the full scope of Trump's tirade, including his throwing the reporters' phones, has not been previously reported. Hilliard declined to comment. Axios reported that Trump's 2024 team is running a more professional operation than that of his previous runs, with seasoned political operatives intending on running a disciplined campaign. Yet the incident demonstrates Trump's hostile relationship with the press remains unchanged. Trump was notorious for lashing out at reporters while in the White House, ignition of heated fury, nullification of threat to control posed by their question. On the campaign trail, he regularly turned the ire of the crowd towards the press, famously coining fake news as a rallying cry. Hilliard's questions revolved around Trump's post on Truth Social at the time, use of social media to control. The former president had warned that there could be potential death and destruction if he was indicted. When Hilliard again tried to clarify Trump's version of events around the DA's investigation, the ex-president said, I don't want to talk to you, nullification of threat to control. Hilliard tried to ask another question. Do you hear me? You're not a nice guy. Insult, nullification of threat to control. Trump said, turning to take a question from another reporter. When Hilliard tried a third time to get a response, Trump lost it. All right, let's go get him out of here, Trump said. Out of here, out of here. Exhibition of heated fury, nullification of threat to control. Hilliard kept trying. The special counsel, sir. A deeper voice, apparently belonging to a Trump campaign aide, can be heard saying, Vaughan, we're done. Trump then picked up one of the phones, according to the gaggle, recording the gaggle, and asked, Whose is this? Hilliard replied that it was his. Trump picked up another phone and asked the same question. That one's mine too, Hilliard said. The former president tossed both, both phones out of his sight, dismissiveness, triangulation, onto the seat next to him. The thud of one of the phones hitting a service can, surface can be heard in the recording. Someone then asked to talk about congressional support, but an aide said that the gaggle was over. Other members of the gaggle included Axios's Sophia Kay, the Daily Mail's Rob Crilly, RSBN's Brian Glenn, and Associated Press photographer Evan Vucci. At one point in the recording, Trump pays Vucci as handsome flattery, telling the plane, look at the arms on him. The Guardian's Hugo Lowell had been expecting to travel with the president for the Waco trip, but was bumped off the trip a day before due to a story he'd written about Truth Social being, an, being under a money laundering investigation, nullification of threat to control by exclusion. The Trump campaign appears to have reduced mainstream press access as a result of what happened on the plane back from Waco. The only reporters on Trump's plane for the last week's trip to New Hampshire were from friendly conservative outlets, Henry Rogers of The Daily Caller and Daniel Baldwin of OANN. Baldwin, in his write-up of the trip, wrote of the warm and welcoming former president. It's clear Trump values the opinions of everyone he surrounds himself with. Whether he agrees or disagrees, he even turned to me and said, you really know your sports. In a surprising turn, Trump is slated to participate in a town hall on CNN next week. Trump campaign spokesman Stephen Chung did not respond to a question about Trump tossing the phone, but did speak to the campaign's press availability. We extended invites to four other mainstream reporters' outlets, and they all said they could not do 
to either White House Correspondents' Dinner events that week or because their editors refused, Chung said in an email regarding the New Hampshire trip without specifying which outlets received those invites. But we've had a ton of media requests to ride on Trump Force One to the upcoming Iowa rally, and we will do our due diligence on who to bring assertion of control through that due diligence. Accordingly, this report provides us with a useful opportunity to enable you to understand the interaction between a narcissist and other people and show how heated, ignited fury manifests. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>